Hey, thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Gamma Cosmic Show. Unfortunately, I'm bringing some bad news to start this episode out with. And it seems that this Matt Reeves Batman film is not going to have Deathstroke involved. Which is sad because a lot of this hype that we garnered for this uh, Ben Affleck Batman movie was off the strength of uh, Deathstroke being involved. We thought the, the spectacular uh, warehouse scene that we've seen Affleck was involved in in the Batman vs. Superman uh, movie that we wanted to see more of that. And we thought with Ben Affleck th hinting and throwing out there that Deathstroke is going to be in this film, well, like, man, we're going to get another epic uh, Batman fight scene. And this time it's going to involve uh, the world's baddest fucking mercenary, uh, Deathstroke. So we were all looking forward to seeing more, fleshing it out. We love the actor that they casted for it, the guy Joe from True Blood. I don't want to say his last name because I butcher it all the time, but you guys know who I'm talking about. He he fits the look, the physique. We wanted to see this happen, and it's sad that they're not going to be using any of the Ben Affleck script. I thought Matt Reeves would pick and choose and dissect what he wanted out of that and maybe toss the other shit that uh, he felt wasn't going to be a good fit for his film. But hearing this and knowing that what could have been is saddening. I'm just hoping that this Matt Reeves film is so great that it makes us forget about what could have been. But it also, for a lot of us comic book purists, we always want to know, what was that original script? I mean, how good was it? Or did it just suck? And Matt Reeves was like, I'm not touching that at all. Or was it just, you know what, it just doesn't fit the style of Batman movie that I want to do. And I'm, I'm going to go with the later. Matt Reeves has stated in a few articles online that he just has a direction that he wants to take this Batman uh, franchise in, and everybody's on board at Warner Brothers. He says there has been some uh, instances where some higher-ups try to throw their paws on it and give their direction, and he plainly uh, met it with, uh, no, this is how I want to do it. So I applaud him and condemn and uh, commend him uh, for sticking up and staying true to his vision. I'm just hoping that this vision is better than the one that Ben Affleck had uh, planned for this franchise, and and I'm, so I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be one of your um, one of your harshest critics until I see otherwise from a trailer or maybe some concept artwork to 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 help me to help me see your vision, Matt Reeves. That's all. I just want to see it, man. And a person like me, I need to visualize it. So if you can give us anything, man, we would appreciate that. So. I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt, but I'm also going to be your harshest uh, critic at the same time because I just, I'm just i always wondering in awe what would have been if Ben Affleck's script has stayed in and we got Deathstroke. I'm not saying Deathstroke's completely out of the ballpark, so don't take me on that as that's a fact. I mean, Deathstroke could still uh, rear his ugly head uh, in this Matt Reeves uh, film. He just might not be the star villain that we were hoping for, but he could appear later on if maybe there's enough fan interest or if it doesn't fit his style of uh, writing that he has for, uh, for this franchise. So, like I said, I am willing to give you um, the benefit of the doubt, Matt Reeves. Uh, so, moving on. about This is about the Fantastic Four. I'm hearing about rumors of a possible reboot. I'm always in favor of a Fantastic Four reboot if it's going to be better than the last movies that they have put out. I don't want to give up on this franchise. A lot of us comic book diehards... Don't want to see them give up on this franchise. Granted, I'm not the most uh, diehard, diehard Fantastic Four uh, comic book reader, but I, I respect them enough to know how important they are to Marvel Comics. To be honest with you, there would be no Iron Man. There'd be no Avengers without the Fantastic Four. They are so important to comic book lore in general and the rich history that surrounds that family. I would love to see them uh, on screen. I would like to see them done right, and that's been the problem. They just haven't hit that. They just haven't hit that tempo uh, for the film. Uh, and I'm one of the very few who thought the last Fantastic Four movie they did had potential. I liked the first 45 minutes of it. I thought it was setting it up to be a great Fantastic Four movie. Uh, what I always loved about Fantastic Four was they were explorers. They brought us to the far different reaches of the universe. And that's what I wanted to see uh, in the Fantastic Four movies. We seem not to get that in any of them. They've just been like maybe two or three locations. Uh, the last one was a military base and then some off-planet uh, allegedly is supposed to be uh, in the negative zone. And that was all we got. In the Rise of the Silver Surfer uh, and the other Fantastic Four movies, 
it was just city landscape and some forest. That's all we got. We never got to see how um, adventurous that this family could be. And the genius of our Reed Richards. I thought they got fit. I thought they got the Human Torch down a little right. But everybody else, they needed to work on, and uh, we need to uh, we need a character uh, growth development on screen. And unfortunately, they can't assume that they're going to be two or three more movies after. Sometimes you just have to hit it right on the first one. You got to make us connect. There was such a disconnect between Sue and uh, and Reed that I never believed in their relationship. And I wanted to see the camaraderie of uh, the Human Torch and Fang joking with each other, but at the same time hating each other like like a little brother uh, rivalry, big brother, little brother rivalry. That's what I expected to see on screen when it comes to the Fantastic Four, and we haven't got to see that yet, unfortunately. But So I'm optimistic. I'm always going to be optimistic when it comes to a Fantastic Four film. I just want to see it done right. Now, there's rumor of a reboot of them starting out as kids. It depends how young. I, to me, I'm a little older, so kids to me could be anywhere from... <laughs> You know, kindergarten school to college, you know, I, I consider anybody in their early 20s still kind of a kid. 21 and under to me is still kind of a kid, uh, to be honest with you. So I think they should maybe start them off in college. Maybe something college, late in college, internship with whatever agency that might lead to the of them getting their powers. Something along that line. Or do we really even need to know their origins? A lot of people, I mean, they could somehow do flashbacks, quick little explain how they got their shit and keep it moving. I would like to see that. Well, bigger than what I would like to see than a Fantastic Four movie reboot is Fox just uh, overhauling their whole cinematic universe. That means including the Fantastic Four into your franchise with the X-Men. Make your own cinematic universe. Fox, I understand you're not going to give up X-Men anytime soon. It is a cash cow, and it doesn't matter what we say to you guys, you're not going to give it back to, to Marvel over, unless it's going to be over you guys' dead body. And I can't see in the, any time in the future of you guys giving up the X-Men until you guys maybe had maybe two bombs in the movie theater right in a row. That's the only way I can see it possibly happening but then again you guys might reboot it a couple more times just trying to see if you guys can get that magic again but what i would like to see is fantastic four in the x-men world combined in the same universe if marvel studios can do it and leave out wolverine uh professor x leave out reed richards and the fantastic four family out of their universe and somehow still make it work I feel that you guys can do the same thing also uh, yes would it, i would love to see a thing in hulk showdown I would love to see that, but you know what? What I would do, I would be happy with maybe a Wolverine and thing showdown, just to, you know mix it up a little bit, give us you guys' version. I I I I also don't know what other characters you guys are holding on to, Fox, that you guys can actually throw into your cinematic universe. But one thing I've noticed, a couple things I noticed that Marvel Studios in their universe has never mentioned the negative zone, so I'm believing that Fantastic Four and Fox has some rights to characters uh, out of that. Uh, side dimension in Marvel uh, in the Marvel uh, comic book universe. Which means we can see Annihilus, we can see Blast Star on screen, and I also, we know you guys have the rights to Silver Surfer and Galactus. We would love to see Heralds. That I mean you guys have you guys have it covered. You got the X Men giving us our um given our, our, our earthly issues and what our society is dealing with uh, with the birth of our superhumans uh, at birth, you know, because that's what a mutant is. You know, you get your abilities at birth. So I think you guys have that covered. And Fantastic Four also brings another element into you guys' cinematic universe. If Fox, if you guys are listening, man. So you guys can bring over Silver Surfer and Galactus and have that cosmic element. I also haven't heard the Shi'ar Empire mentioned at all in um, Guardians of the Galaxy or anything over in the Marvel landscape. If I missed it, guys, if there was an Easter egg somewhere of the Shi'ar Empire, please leave it down in the comment section so I can research it and fact check it myself. But if they haven't used Shi'ar Empire and Fox somehow holds uh, holds the rights to those characters and that entity and civilization to be used, I think they should use it. Um, it just would broaden their cinematic universe, man. I just think there's just so much possibilities. And and as a comic book purist, I'm just going to have to just sit back and just imagine Marvel Studios and Fox and Sony is all in the same universe. I'm big enough and have a big enough imagination to be able to do that without actually happening to see it happen on screen. It would be nice if it did happen, but 
the climate of business, it's just not going to happen. So I just, with the Fantastic Four, if you're going to reboot it, reboot it back into your uh, X-Men franchise. Make it one big universe. Start it off in the Deadpool universe. I think, honestly, man, I, I think Fox's entry point into their own cinematic universe should be through the Deadpool movie. It's already acclaimed as one of the best comic book movies of all time. Up, you know, so it's up there. It's mentioned in the conversation all the time with, with Dark Knight, Spider-Man 2. Deadpool is brought up right along with them. And for those who don't bring up Deadpool as a great comic book adaptation to the big screen, to me, I might have to question your credentials a little bit if you even really read comic books. That's just me. That's just me. All right? So moving on, guys. We're going to talk a little bit about Venom and uh, the Sony issue over there and Amy Pascal not... I mean, she's fucking just all over the place, man. It's part of the cinematic universe, then it's not part of the cinematic universe, then it's part of the quote-unquote MCU reality, where it's kind of like Netflix, but you don't see those guys, you know? What, I'm like, just make up your fucking mind, man. Like, I don't care if it is or not, to be honest with you. Well, I do kind of, because I don't think Marvel really wants to associate any of their movies with their universe with a rated R tag on it. So if Sony wants to just take Venom and run with it, run with it. Stop leading us around. You're not going to get those Spider-Man diehard fans that want to see Venom in the Marvel Studios um, films. They're going to come anyway because it's Venom. And it's and he's attached to their favorite character. So you're going to get them anyway. They want to go see your movie just to see you fail. So they're willing to pay just to go see it fail. All you got to do is make them a believer, Sony. Make us a believer. If you want to make a Zombieland-type Venom movie... Great! Just you gotta hit it on all cylinders and it has to, you gotta knock it out the park. That's all. It can't just be, eh, it has to be a home run. Like, I feel like it could work with a zombie land slash kick ass type vibe. I really think Venom could work like that. I wouldn't, I don't think I, I'm beyond laughing at a, in a Venom movie. Like, would I like it dark and disturbing all the way through? I wouldn't mind that. But if it's still dark with dark humor, I'm definitely okay with that. Venom needs to set his own little vibe and his own little cinematic universe, his own little spider Venom verse, and just run with it, man. Just Mark, Sony, you guys do a good job of bringing the physical attributes from the comic books to big screen. I've seen you guys do that with Amazing Spider-Man, so I believe that Venom is in good hands. Just you need to make him as big as he is in the comic book. He has to have that flex. He has to have that agility and that strength to match it, and that ferocity of that symbiote. Man, we got to see Eddie in that symbiote like. We, we, we should care about both of them. That's what I'm getting to, that we, you should make us care about that symbiote. You know, we love our pets in America and most Western civilizations. I look at the symbiote almost like a pet, and we might end up falling in love with the symbiote. I can see the symbiote just saying some fucked up funny shit, and we all laughing. So I definitely can see this working, guys. I wouldn't jump into Sony's ass yet about they don't know what they want to do. They're looking at Deadpool and seeing that, and they're copying Deadpool. Granted, man, Deadpool had comedy in it. But when the action scenes took place, it was all business. Deadpool was all business. He would throw his little corpse in there to make us laugh, but he was all business. He was serious. When it comes to his sword fight and his gunplay, um, him taking on um, this faction that are, are, are making superhuman uh, being soldiers, him taking them on, it was all business. He was serious about it with comedy. So I think it could work. It can work with the Venom movie. Um, I'm not by no means giving Sony a pass on this because they have they have fucked up a lot, man. They fucked up with the Amazing Spider-Man 2 of just I mean, they even had Venom already planned when they were talking when they were making the Amazing Spider-Man movies. Like they wanted Venom to come quick. I just think that's the only problem with Sony. They rush things too quick. This here I like what they're doing with, with Venom. I like that they got Black Cat and Silver Sable coming. To me, that's great additions, and I hope to see a few other, like, uh, maybe Spider-Gwen or Silk. I don't know if they have rights to those uh, characters at all. But if they do, that's a great way to make up for not having Spider-Man uh, in your universe. And honestly, I don't care if Tom Holland is in you guys' uh, universe. Honestly, Sony, work on getting back Andrew Garfield. Is there a way that we can possibly get him back? He'd be the perfect age right now to play a grown-up Peter Parker, uh, Parker Industries. You know, just a more grown-up Peter Parker. He doesn't have to be in high school. So it'll, be, it'll make it easier for Venom being in the, um, having his own universe with Spider-Man somehow tied to it is with Andrew Garfield somehow. Maybe you can tie in the Amazing Spider-Man um, movies somehow. You know, even with the bad taste that's left in everybody's mouths, 
I think people will still be happy knowing that spider man is somehow involved. I think that's a way to fix it. It may be, you know, maybe throw a Band-Aid over something right now until you guys deliver the finished product. And the finished product has to be a home run. Has to be, guys. Sony, you just... You're, Tom Holland and Marvel Studios and Spider-Man, even though Sony's attached to it somehow, I don't know how you guys are actually get, making your money off of it, but it's raking in millions. It's already predicted to hit 120 million. I mean, it's it's crazy where this movie is going at right now. Even though it's uh, blowing up, it's been a slow summer, so Spider-Man Homecoming didn't have a lot of competition. War of the Planet of the Apes, I'm hearing, is a very, very, very good movie, and that we were prepared to be blown away. So Spider-Man better rake up his money now, because the actual better movie this summer might be War of the Planet of the Apes, and that's a movie that I'm looking forward to, uh, to go seeing and reviewing and talking with you guys. So thank you guys, man, for tuning in to another episode, man. Got a lot more coming up. I know I tell you guys at the end of the episodes what I'm going to be talking about later on, but sometimes other shit hits me, and I just want to talk about that. Uh, at this moment, so but I'm still going to get back in. I'm digging in to see what else we're going to get on the Watchmen coming on uh, HBO. I want to know more what's going on with the Justice League. I hear that they're coming to uh, Comic Con, which is excellent. Maybe we might get some new concept artwork. Uh, maybe see more about the villains that's going to be involved in this movie and see what other plans DC Cinematic Universe has after the Justice League. So that and what's the fate? of oh, Superman. I mean, we all know he's coming back, but when and when we're going to get a green light for the Man of Steel Part 2. I arguably think that Man of Steel is the best um, DC cinematic uh, movie to date. Not the Nolan Ryan ones. I'm not counting those guys. So right now, it goes Man of Steel, then Wonder Woman to me. Then I'll say oh, Batman vs. Superman and then Suicide Squad. You know, um, Definitely love the villain at the end of Suicide Squad. I thought that was a Justice League uh, caliber villain, but... Hey, it is what it is, man. So, well, thank you guys for tuning in, man. You guys have a good day, man. Peace.